Getting knocked down on the football field makes you tough. But getting back up makes you tougher. At Goodyear, we call that determination. A willingness to put in more hours, more reps, and more heart to reach a bar that's sky high. Because the Goodyear blimp doesn't show up for just anybody. So don't be just anybody. Be blimp worthy. Goodyear. More driven. And now, Jalen and Jacoby on ESPN Radio. When I pop the trunk, head the dirt. Yeah, I pop the trunk, I pop the hood. Now act stupid, I'll pop the trunk. Now give me a po 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 He is Jalen verse everybody. What up? Go. I'm David Jacoby. In on the cool check-in. Center stage on the mic. And we putting it on wax. It's the new style. Mmm, the new style. Every time we do the intro, you act like it's the first time you ever heard Because the Beastie Boys are so dope. We're Jalen and Jacoby. What do we do? We get to be my What they want. Happy Friday, everybody. Finishing up the week strong here on Jalen and Jacoby. We've got some fantasy advice from Jalen Rose. We figured we would use our fantasy guru. Not only did he win our Jalen and Jacoby fantasy league last year, but he's also in a league that he pays how much money for? A couple of dollars. More money than most of us have in our bank account. Let's just say that. <laughs> so, Jalen, you know when you've got that much money at stake that you, you do your research. We're going to hit you with that. We're going to catch you up on the latest with Jalen Ramsey, Dwayne Wade, cultural and regional, and much more. But we always got to give people what they want with the podcast exclusives. And really, we just want to listen to some voicemails. We want to hear from you. Call 985-80-JALEN. Hit us with some voicemails. We'll put you on the show just like this. Yo, what's up, Jalen and Jacoby? This your boy, Tim. Calling from Columbia, South Carolina. First of all, shout out, Rich. Boss move or soft move? Man, I'm in South Carolina. Hurricane Florence is coming, Jalen and Jacoby. Like, whoa. What I do is I'm a constructor and I put shelves in to new homes here in South Carolina. And I go to Georgia and I go to North Carolina. And basically the storm's supposed to be here tomorrow. And my boss still wants us to come to work. And my girl's like, man, don't go, don't go, don't go to work. You can sue them. It's a natural disaster. Should I go to work in this storm, guys, or should I just... Stick to my guns, and if they try to fire me, because it's supposed to be supposed to be a recommendation of fire, meaning they're not going to fire us, but it's a possible chance. What should I do, guys? Keep getting those checks. Shout out to South Carolina Game Cops. Shout out to the Rams. Shout out to the Los Angeles Lakers. LeBron. Jack. Tim, thank you for the call. Shout out. We appreciate the love and support. Sending all of our thoughts mm-hmm. and our well wishes to everybody in the Carolinas. I hear the storm is possibly going to. Yep. Have some effect on the East Coast as well. Yep. Just wishing everybody to stay safe and take care of themselves and their loved ones. To answer your question directly, I'm just going to be frank. Don't get fired. You got to go to work. Yep. Boss said go to work. If you you've go been to work. listening to this program for the last eight years, one of our mottos is don't get fired. Don't get fired. And you know how you get fired? Not showing up at work. When the weather's bad. Guess where we are right now? In New York City. I'm from Michigan. The weather actually gets bad multiple months a year. Here's the thing. If your boss gets in his car and he drives to the site, you got to get in your car and drive to the site. No. 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 Yes. Reg is wrong. Jacoby yes. is wrong. Yes. No. Don't worry about others. Don't worry about what your boss does, because your boss may or may not be there. Listen, if don't he, worry if about what she, your coworkers do. If he do. or she decides to get in the car, go to work, then you got to get in the car, go to work. If he or she decides that it's too much and stays home, then you stay home. Preach. Follow their lead. And also, here's the other thing I want to say: Can you get another job that's going to pay you more? Well, that's a, that's another conversation for that. Correct, but 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 that's what you have to consider. If you're going to consider not going because they may fire you, you have to still consider how you're going to pay your light bill, gas bill, phone bill, your taxes, and your bills. I want to hear about these shelves. What kind of shelves are we talking? What type of wood are we using? Do you put shelves inside of a cabinet? You put shelves on the wall for books? Is shelves exclusive? Exclusive shelves? You don't build walls? You just do shelves? Do you do cabinetry? Is it all woodwork? 
Don't get fired and don't listen to Jacoby. Don't don't gauge you showing up at work based on what your boss do. Don't do that. Don't oh, that's gauge. That's definitely what I do. If my boss shows up at 11, I'm there at 10:59. <laughs> don't gauge what your coworkers do. Their situation is different from yours. That's the number one mistake adults make. They focus don't on everybody. Don't listen to Jalen. Except themselves. Don't listen to Jalen. Don't get fired. Now, if you can't make it, here's what you do. You pull out your cell phone and you video how bad the weather is. Oh, there you go. Of you and your car, but don't leave your block. Yeah. You, you make, make it an look effort. like make you effort. made an effort to go. Yes. You show the footage of how bad the weather is. And you also show it on the television, acknowledging that it's not going to change. So, therefore, if and when they fire you, you now have an HR claim. Shout to the beautiful shelves that this man makes in Columbia, South Shout Carolina, out. and all over the Carolinas and Georgia. Some great shelves. Let's give the people what they want. Getting knocked down on the football field makes you tough. But getting back up makes you tougher. At Goodyear, we call that determination. A willingness to put in more hours, more reps, and more heart to reach a bar that's sky high. Because the Goodyear blimp doesn't show up for just anybody. So don't be just anybody. Be blimp worthy. Goodyear. More driven. We have some big football games this weekend. One of the biggest is the AFC Championship rematch between the New England Patriots and the Jacksonville Jaguars. In advance of that big game, media happened. And people were asking questions. And someone asked Jalen Ramsey about his approach to the game of football. And here's his answer. He good. He good now. We ain't going to get it twisted. He's good. But, it, like, you saying this to me, is it supposed to, like, bring fear to me or something? Like, All right, then. I, ain't, I don't fear no man. Period. And my brother, my dad, my mom, grandma was out there like, it's, it's on. Like After the game, we can be cool. It doesn't matter. That's how I feel like you got to respect the game of football. The fo- football is not a game meant to be played, being nice to each other and, and all that, like kumbaya. Um, but after the game's over with, that's cool. You wouldn't really hate your grandma. No, I definitely would. She know that. <laughs> <laughs> my grandma know that. I love you, but she know that. <laughs> would she hit you back? Would she hit me back? Grandma might not get up from one of my legs. (laughs) Such an infectious personality. So fun to listen to and to watch play. One of the best cornerbacks in the game. But one of the most interesting players off the field as well. There's a lot to unpack there, Jalen Rose. But first, Jalen Ramsey's been in the news a lot preseason and this season. Some great stuff was written about him. by one One by our colleagues, Mina Kimes. What do you think about how he's handling his media persona? He's staying true to his personality and his identity. You could tell quickly if somebody's behavior is forced Mm -hmm. or it's organic. You could clearly tell that he understands that not only am I an all-pro performer who has a chance to be on a contending team, I'm going to talk trash and I'm going to back it up. I'm going to put the bullseye on myself. So in week one... I know that you guys are going to talk to me about Odell Beckham. In week two, I know you guys are going to talk to me about Gronk. But he's playing the media, and it's smart. What do you mean? Because guess what he did after the game, regardless of what he said about Eli and what happened in the game? They won. Him and Odell were on the field exchanging jerseys. Yep. Yep. No harm, no foul. Like he said, I'll hit my grandma. But when the game ends, it ends. He probably ain't going to even be guarding Gronk. Gronk a tight end. Yeah. He'll get matched up on him, but it's not like he's going to follow him around the field. (laughs) But again, he has us talking about him. And so what I thought about for national media consumption, here's what happens with the NFL. The only teams that we're going to talk about consistently are the Cowboys, the Steelers, the Giants, the Green Bay Packers, and the Patriots. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about those teams Period. No matter what year, they're no matter what their rinse. record is, that's just the way it goes. They're on rinse and repeat. I know how this business Bring is. Bring you guys in. Let Play me give hit. y'all some games. Play the hits. The other thing we're going to talk about is the quarterback position, qu- quarterback position because it's considered the most prestigious. It is. And so we're going to talk about what happens with Rodgers, what happens with Brady. How much time we spent talking about Nathan Peterman? And then we're going to talk about even the bad quarterback How much situation. time did we spend talking about Nathan Peterman in this business? And the only other thing we're going to talk about after that is loud 
and flashy skilled players. Let me take let me take you behind the curtain, Jalen Rose, as a media member. Because here's the thing: is you get buckets in the NBA, but what we need to get quotes. You know who's going to give you a quote? Jalen Ramsey. So after the game, you know who's who you go walk to. You know who, whose face you put the microphone in? Jalen Ramsey, because you know he's going to say something interesting, and that works for him as well. It's mutually beneficial because you know what's going to happen. He's going to get more endorsements. And he's going to get a Nike deal. And he's going to be in commercials. Why? Because he's got a good personality. And he gives the quotes we show his face on the television. And also, here's an exercise for everybody, not just for you. Who are the top three defensive backs in the league? Marcus Peters and Jalen Ramsey. And in third, I'm probably going to go. Who should I go here? I don't know. That's my point exactly. What did Marcus Peters do when he got a pick six last week? He jumped he into the, into the end zone, into, yeah. a la Marshawn Lynch, mm-hmm. and we showed that. Okay. Richard Sherman is a terrific player. Really well read, been on our show, really educated, terrific football player. But he also lets you know it. Mm-hmm. And so those are the guys that we just so happen to talk about. Of course. Odell Beckham was a great receiver. But A.J. Green scored four touchdowns, three touchdowns in but last night. But he doesn't have Odell Beckham's personality. He doesn't have the blonde hair. He doesn't have the flair. He's not, you know, he's not putting himself out there. He's not with the Kardashians. And so people don't talk about A.J. Green the same way they talk about Odell Beckham. And he's in Cincinnati and one's in New York. Yep, same thing with Julio Jones. also plays as well. Mm-hmm. So that that's what Jalen has understood, and that's what he's using to his benefit on a defense that is stout beyond just him. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a, that's a solid defense in all three <laughs> phases. So here's a question. Are all Jalen's loud? Yes. Are all Jalen's loud? Does it just come with it? You saw Hurts get that. Are there any, are there, are there any nerdy Jalen's out there? Are there any, nah. any Jalen's nah. get B's. They don't get A's. Nah. Yeah. Nah. I understand. Jalen's let you know they're in the room. I'm excited. I'm excited for that game and some other matchups in the NFL. But right now I want to turn our attention to the National Basketball Association quickly. Now, we know the rosters. Of all the teams, except there's still some players floating out there. One player that has not signed is a gentleman by the name of Dwayne Wade. He said that if he plays, he's going to play for the Heat. Okay. Now the Heat can only offer him a veteran minimum, which is 2.4 or the mid-level exception, exception, taxpayer exception, which is $5.3 million. So he's not holding out, negotiating to get more money. He's either going to get 2.4 or 5.3, most likely the 5.3. Why hasn't he made his decision yet whether or not he's going to play? Two words. Farewell tour. Yes. Okay. He's a three-time champion, one of the greatest to do it, clearly a Hall of Famer. He left Miami, which I said on this program, and I said this to him, that I felt like it would be a mistake. You leave there, you messing with your chance to get a statue. Because it may be a long time before LeBron James' numbers hanging in Miami mm-hmm. because he left the mafia. Mm-hmm. And Pat Raleigh does not like that at all. So for D. Wade, he got a bigger offer from Denver, chose to go home to Chicago. He was throwing out the first pitch. It seemed like it was all good. Then a week ago happened. Yep. And before you know it, he wasn't in Chicago no more. He was in Cleveland. And what were we saying? He and LeBron are going to lead them to the finals. And what ends up happening? They do, they trade six they players. They trade everybody. Okay. They add five. In three or four different deals. And he wasn't a part of the final Kobe run. called LeBron and was like, uh, we're going to tra- trade Dwayne. Do you mind? He was like, I'm good with that. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> I'm fine. And so now that he's back in Miami where he deserves all of the accolades that he's going to get this year, it should be about celebrating the legacy of his great career as a member of the Miami Heat. Be a reserve. When the game's out of hand, you play limited minutes. You play around 20 to 24 minutes, in particular the second quarter and the fourth quarter to close out games, kind of like he did against Philly in the playoffs. So here's a question. Does he come back because he wants the farewell tour? Does he want the, does the let's stop the game and the standing ovation at the end and all of that? See, like Manu announces his retirement in the offseason and he's not going to get the farewell tour. Does Dwayne Wade come back because he wants the farewell tour? No, we see this in baseball right now from a pitcher for, with the Mets um, coming back from an injury. And so what ends up happening for anybody that's seen paid in full, it's like, Mitch, I love the game. Mm-hmm. That's why you come back, because you love the game. And 
a lot of people can't determine when it's over. Like, I, I couldn't determine when it was over. Now, you think I knew when I went to Phoenix I was going to get DMPs? You I wouldn't have gone there. Retired. You still and, haven't retired. And I still retired. haven't retired. And just for the record, it's David Wright and he's not a pitcher, but move on. Uh, David Wright, exactly. So, my, my point, though, for Dwayne Wade is he deserves a farewell tour. He's going to get a farewell tour. And you should come back and be adored for all of the great things that you've accomplished. Plus... Get a chance to play the game you love. Yeah. Be a mentor in Miami and play on the big stage. Should is he worth more than five point three million dollars? Sure, but is five point three million dollars something you should just you know look over? No, that's five point three million dollars. Why not? Moving on, Jimmy Butler was being hounded by TMZ. I've seen you on TMZ a few times, Jalen Rose, and let's just take a look at the interaction between him and the TMZ cameras because there's something very important I need to point out. So there's Jimmy. Walking down the street, they're asking him about Iggy Azalea or something. He's not really answering the questions. But right there, you see it. You see it. Jimmy Butler, multimillionaire. You see him. He is a card-carrying member of what, Jalen Rose? The minivan mafia. The minivan mafia. Oh, I miss my minivan so much. I have so much respect for men and women that decide... To be a part of the minivan mafia. I didn't decide to be a part of the minivan mafia. <laughs> I had twins that I had to be a part of the minivan you. mafia. And once I was in, I was in for life. But I have so much respect for the men and women that say, you know what? I like space. I like cup holders. I like a comfortable ride. I like to ride high. I like to ride high when I drive down the street. And a sliding door. Oh, oh, you you don't even have to touch it, Jalen. You don't have to touch the sliding door. You just push the key button and it opens for you while you walk up. Shout out to everybody who's a part of the Mavan Mafia. Uh Uh-oh, it's time for News and Matters. A gentleman by the name of Paul Guadalupe Gonzalez. He lives in Los Angeles. He's online dating, swiping right, swiping left. He goes on 10 dates with women at nice restaurants. And he he orders the menu. He orders all kinds of drinks, all kinds of food. And do you know what he does? Bounces before the check comes. (laughs) Paul Guadalupe Gonzalez is now facing 10 counts of extortion, fraud, and petty theft against 10 women over the past two years. Jalen Rose, what is the appropriate punishment for the Dine and Dash dater? Just find a way to pay for the meals that you dashed on. That's it? Yeah. No jail time, no probation, no fine, nothing? A little misdemeanor. Other than that, just find a way to pay for the meals. I don't think that in a country where we're continuing to jail people for what I consider a lot of petty crimes, this should be something that occupies space. Now, I am somebody, and I don't know what the statute of limitations is. I've done a lot of dining dashes. Really? What? My second date with my wife was a dine and dash. See what I, that's what I'm I saying. I didn't have enough money. I looked at her. She didn't have any money either. I was like, we're about to do this. No, you looked at her like, we about to get married. <laughs> yeah, if she yeah, was yeah. ride or die like that, you know what from I day learned? One. You know what I learned Three. that day? My wife not that athletic, but very fast. <laughs> very fast. She was running down the Third Street Promenade. But, but my whole thing is, I want to apologize to the California Pizza Kitchen and the Third Street Promenade. Yeah, I want to promise yeah. to a lot of different places: yeah. Denny's, Bob Evans, <laughs> yeah. you so know, a lot of Elias we Brothers, to Big to. Boys. <laughs> you know, I want to apologize to all the cab drivers that Pizza have ran out on this downtown. I should, just, I should pull a cab over and just give them fifty dollars just for karma. Ah. Jalen Rose. You won our fantasy league last year. I'm pretty good. You are also in a very expensive fantasy football league. We won't even talk about how much money you lose every year playing fantasy football. <laughs> but all of this is I know you very well, and I know that you really care about fantasy football. You do a lot of research, more research on fantasy football than you do for the topics of this program. And I'm not the only person walking the face of the earth that cares about fantasy football and betting on NFL and see what's going to happen in projections. Allegedly betting on NFL. Well, anytime you play fantasy football, you're basically gambling. Okay. So we have a new segment, Fantasy Fridays. Jalen Rose, there are some players in fantasy that make you so salty. And there are some <laughs> players that are going to have a sweet week. So we broke them up into two categories, the salty and the sweet. Jalen, who's going to have a sweet week? The first person is going to have a sweet week, and I came through the door... If you listen to this program, I've said it before. Patrick Mahomes. My homies. I remember Where the, my homies. we talked about tiers of NFL quarterbacks, and they had him like 27th or something. And I was like, y'all not paying attention to the weapons that KC has. Mm-hmm. Y'all saw him light it up in week one getting Tyreek Hill going. I love the going, way he looks. And he's going to light it up this week going against the Pittsburgh. 
Pittsburgh Steelers. If if Terod Taylor can put up two touchdowns at the end of the game like that, Patrick Mahomes can do some work. So he's having a sweet week. Who else is going to have a sweet week? You know, this one's a little personal. Uh Uh-oh. Close to my heart. Uh Uh-oh. Golden Tate. You know, the Lions were on national TV Monday night, and nobody looked good. Did they win? And the quarterback, Matthew Stafford, threw four interceptions. That's never a good thing. Against the Jets. So what makes you think Golden Tate's going to have a sweet week, He's going to bounce back against the San Francisco 49ers. And not because they don't have a pretty good defense. It's not because they don't have Richard Sherman. I think scheme-wise, the team is going to do a better job on focusing on getting him the football. Mm -hmm. And I would hope, since we hired a defensive coordinator to be our head coach, and Matt Patricia, he has some level of familiarity with Jimmy Garoppolo, who's the quarterback of the other team, which should get us the ball in better field position more often. Who else is going to have a sweet week, Mr. Rose? He plays in Philly. Mm-hmm. Jay Ajay. The last time I checked, um, Carson Wentz isn't playing. Nope. Alshon Jeffries isn't playing. Nope. And he had two touchdowns last weekend. And this weekend they're going against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Who won the game and gave up 40 last week? Good point. I I think he's going to be a guy that gets it going. And again, we don't need to tell you to start Tom Brady. So, you know, these are players that are a little under the radar. Like, these are players that that Jalen is picking to have a sweet week. And who's the last one you're picking to have a sweet week? The last one I think is going to have a sweet week is Deshaun Watson. Oh. He started the first game versus the Patriots with a fumble. Didn't look great. He got injured last year after having Looks so good six before amazing injured. games last year. They catapulted so many people to probably make him one of the top two or three overall quarterbacks in fantasy football. And this week, they have the Titans. Mariota got injured last week. We don't know mm-hmm. how that's going to affect him this week. I just think Deshaun Watson resembles more of the player everybody fell in love with last year when he was healthy. So let's get to the salty. What players are going to make you salty? And this first one I know is personal for you. The first one is personal. Le'Veon Bell. So tell him the story. You're in a league that costs a lot of money. And we drafted the previous Friday as opposed to, like, the Wednesday before the game start. So therefore, I took him number two. So you took Le'Veon Bell. You have thousands of dollars on this league, and you took Le'Veon Bell, and he's holding out. Have you reached out to him? <laughs> have you texted him? Have you have you have you offered to pay some of his salary? I'm gonna slide in his DMs in a minute. <laughs> like Le'Veon, <laughs> you're costing me money. It was all, I want you to get yours, but you're costing me mine. And then Connor's out there performing, putting up yep. season highs in total yards. So Le'Veon Bell, whoever took him, like I did, regardless of whether you took him second or tenth. It's still a hole in your lineup. Who else is going to make you salty if you're a fantasy owner? David Johnson. Mm-hmm. Of high the Cardinals. Draft high draft Another pick. high draft pick. He got injured early last year. And the Cardinals, they looked terrible last week against the Cardinals. And you know Washington. who looks good? The Rams defense. And they play against the Rams this week. I don't anticipate with their quarterback issues between Bradford and Rosen that he's going to be able to get going this week against those guys. Who else is going to make you salty? Going to you, Dallas. And... You might see Dez Bryant tweeting about this. Dak Prescott. The offensive line isn't the same. He looks bad. People are wondering if Jerry put him in the sunken place as it relates to the anthem controversy. He's a free agent. They only ran Ezekiel 15 times last week. They don't truly have a number one receiver, and they play at Carolina. They didn't get into opponent's territory in the entire first half of the game. They just looked bad, and Dak looked out of sorts. He didn't look like he was in control of the game the way he was last week. Game one was against the Panthers, stout defense. Mm -hmm. Game two, division four, New York football giants, who are already, through Landon Collins, daring him to beat them. Yep. And he came back with the retort. They'll get their wish. Well, if he throws 40 times and Zeke is not running the ball 25 times, that is not a recipe for the Dallas Cowboys to win a football game. Who else is going to make you salty? Well, first, Aaron Rodgers, because he ain't playing. You still, you I'm just keep putting saying this out there. Aaron Rodgers is this. not playing. But I'm going to say... Fitz Magic will be dead week two. Wait, what? What? My guy? Yeah. My guy? No. The it beard? Was, Harvard? It, Crimson? It was all good just a week ago. So you're you're going to go on wax and say the Fitz Magic is over. It's just a one week fling? I'm not saying that he's not going to continue to perform well. I'm saying this week they play against the Philadelphia Eagles. Good defense. They are really good defense. And we saw how they were able to win on that side of the football in their first game. So I don't anticipate that changing this week. 
Well, we'll check in on Monday to see how all this shake out. But if you've got a fantasy team and you're thinking about you owning some of these players, remember who's going to make you salty. Aaron Rodgers is not have playing. A sweet week. Nope. I just saved hundreds of dollars by switching to Geico. I should have done this years ago. Disclaimer, traveling back in time is physically impossible unless you know how to build a functioning time machine. Then by all means, travel 25 years back in time, switch your car insurance to GEICO. You could save a bunch of money. While you're there, please prevent your younger self from wearing that sleeveless tuxedo t-shirt, parachute pants, and glitter high tops to your senior prom. And at long last, rectify this horrible crime against nature. GEICO is absolved of all liability if you destroy the fabric of time and space. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. We be moving, you know we keep it moving. Uh. If you want to discuss the topic, you say hit the brakes. If you don't, me, you, and Method Man will keep it moving. Are you ready, Mr. Rose? Let's get it. One officer that was involved in the controversial arrest of NBA player Sterling Brown has been fired. Keep it moving or hit the brakes? Just now being fired? Keep it moving. We keep it moving. We keep it moving. Justice. Dirk Nowitzki says he has no problem coming off the bench. Keep it moving or hit the brakes. Of course he don't. They're not going <laughs> in the playoffs. And he's clearly probably going to play his last year. Keep it moving. Okay. Jaylen Shout out to Dirk. Keep Jacobi getting them moving. checks. You know we keep it moving up. We have an update on the status of Gordon Hayward. Hit the brakes. Okay. Gordon Hayward Notice says that he is, quote, I would say I'm basically 100%. There's rumors he's playing five on five. There you see him working out, looking good. Kyrie Irving back, Gordon Hayward back, young core. Are the Celtics your pick to go to the NBA Finals out of the East? Absolutely, and that's not surprising. A lot of people are going to feel the exact same way. They have so many talented players. And for them to make it to the Conference Finals, basically without their starting backcourt and Kyrie Irving and Gordon Hayward just means they should be ready to take a quantum leap as it relates to not only winning the East, but being a legitimate Finals Full for the Golden State Warriors, who I anticipate they're going to play. Well, when we watch basketball together, which we do a lot, you always say, that's my guy. And one of your guys is Gordon Hayward. Like you've, you've said it for years now. You're like, that's my guy. Why is Gordon Hayward one of your guys? He's complete. I got a chance to cover him in college. For those that don't know, Brad Stevens actually coached him at Butler. Mm-hmm. They went to back-to-back Final Fours. And so what I appreciate about his game, he could drive to the basket and finish at the hoop. He has a mid-range game. He can shoot the three. He can play in the half court. He can play in transition. He has some defensive tenacity. He Mm -hmm. really gets after it. He's more athletic than people give him credit for. So, like, all of those things had me sit back watching, like, he got game. He got game. People sleeping on him. So that's why when he became basically a 20-point scorer in Utah and they weren't able to keep him, though Donovan Mitchell came in and did a terrific job, I knew that was going to be a major loss. Next. D'Angelo Hall said Paris Hilton saved him $15,000. Keep it moving or hit the brakes. D'Angelo Hall, that's my man, 50 grand, but Paris Hilton. Keep We're not going to discuss her in this program. We keep, keep it moving. moving. We keep it moving. The New Jersey Division of Gambling Enforcement released their data about how much was gambled in the month of August. Mm, not keep only are we going to hit the brakes, I need to back for this one. Okay, we're going to hit the brakes. In New Jersey said that in New Jersey, a total of $9.5 million. Mm was gambled, and they made a revenue of $9.81 million. And remember, this is just the month of August before the NFL and the NBA season start. What do you expect to be those numbers for the months of September and October? Double in September, so I'm saying 20. In October, basically through the Super Bowl, that nine number would get up to like $35 million. Wow. Like people are enthusiastic about sports and betting allows the casual fan to draw interest. And nine is just the profit. It's actually 95.6 money was risked. And that is just in August. That's a lot of money. Have you started gambling on sports now that it's legal? I have not, will not, other than fantasy football. Me neither. Me neither. Moving on. Osaka is about to sign the richest deal in women's tennis. Keep it moving or hit the brakes. Hit the brakes. Okay. Naomi Osaka is about to sign an endorsement deal with Adidas that will pay her $8.5 million a year, more than Serena's Nike deal. This is going to make it the biggest endorsement deal in women's tennis. My question for you is this. Could the Serena scandal have made her a household name and made her more of an endorsement person? Of course. It 
it's it's an indirect consequence. You have mm-hmm. the greatest women's player, probably the great one of the greatest athletes of all time, have a controversial ending on a on a big time stage. And before you know it, and this is why I hit the brakes, she gets overlooked. Yep. Until Serena tells the crowd, can y'all actually like stop booing? She did kind of beat me. And, and every single person that watched that moment, and I was sitting there watching it too, just their heart went out to her and you feel for her. And it did make her a household name because it was such a, an emotional moment. And obviously I think if she could have her way, she, it would have played out differently for her. She obviously didn't enjoy it. But this is this indirect benefit of it made her a household name. And also it's one of those things that there's nothing she could have done. Like what else? Like it's one thing for her to um, allow Serena to continue her disagreement and just stand there. But what's she going to do? Push her out of the way? She had tell no, her to be quiet? She had no That's active her role. Idol. She had no active she, yeah, role in it. It happened correct. to her, not with her. Correct. But – She's getting paid. But I love to her. the emotion and the embrace that she had with her mom after the match. That's Those are the type of moments that make me love sports. Some students in South Korea had some very interesting tactics to avoid military service. Keep it moving oh, or hit the brakes. definitely hit the brakes. Okay. I come from an era where ROTC was in high school. So in South Korea, these students binge ate pizzas and burgers and drank protein shakes so they would gain weight, so they would seem not fit for military service. Soft move or boss move? Boss move. Okay. That's exactly what I did when I retired from the league. <laughs> so I wouldn't get drafted. <laughs> you're the best. I remember Fat Jalen. I'm so, I'm so glad that you're back. Kangaroo. Fat Jalen didn't, didn't look healthy. <laughs> nope. We look back at all the things that we learned this week. You must learn. Now we just summarize all the lessons that we learned. Because we learned a lot this week. One thing that we learned is umpires need to chill. Yes. Yep. Y'all, need to, y'all need to chill. For real, for real. Not only was there the thing on Saturday, which we all know about the Serena controversy, but then there's this. The umpires union gets together, and they're saying that they're not respected, and they might strike, and that they're coming out with statements saying that they need to be supported when they make an unpopular call. Do you know what y'all need to do? Sit down. Be Be humble. humble. Just chill. (laughs) This is going to blow over just like everything else. This is going to blow over, umpires. No one's going to talk about you anymore. You can get back to sitting up in your chair and wearing your polos and saying, let. And it's it's okay for a sister to yell at you and get away with it. It's fine. Love. Don't quit your job. Don't kick and scream. Don't out. Out. It happened. Let. She called you a thief. Game. Keep it moving. Keep Another thing we learned, Kirk Heinrich took his phone off vibrate. Let me explain. Tom Thibodeau <laughs> is only making roster moves from people that are in his contacts in his phone. They picked, they picked up Todd Gibson, Jimmy Butler, they picked up Derek Day, Rose, Derek Rose, and look at these other guys all just waiting for a phone call. Joe Kim Noah's like, you got trade for me or something. Brian Scalabrini started working out. He's at the gym. Brian Scalabrini's on the on the treadmill right now. Like they could call. Joe Kim Noah's probably on the farm with Don Nelson. Don Nelson. Yeah, he's he's, he's on that Nelly Kush. Living right his now. best life. He's definitely. But I'm Nelly a former right member of the Bulls. Holla at your boy Tibbs. I ain't retired. You didn't play for Tibbs though. Do you know who did play for Tibbs? David Jacoby. True story. Harvard basketball camp. Probably about thirty years ago. Tibbs, hit me up. He only, he only, he only picks up people that used to play for him. <laughs> he was my coach. Moving on. Another thing we learned this week. Seagulls are protected by federal law. Now allow me to explain. There was a gentleman on the beach in New Hampshire. He was enjoying himself, getting some sun. He was out there for a few hours. He got a little hungry. So what he do? He went to the stand. He ordered a burger and he ordered his fries. How do you order the fries, Jalen? Crispy. Well done. The only way that Jalen orders fries. And he was enjoying the fries. And he left his burger to the side. And what happened? A seagull came and stole his cheeseburger. He then allegedly kicked the seagull. A bystander reported this act to the authorities. The police came. The actual police came and gave him a $120 fine, $124 fine for kicking the seagull. Jalen Rose, is this just punishment? This is not just punishment. Uh, my favorite seagull that stands ten toes down is Beanie. Mm-hmm. Shout to Philly. Of course. Shout but out. in this case, the seagull got to get it. 
And I know there are going to be a lot of animal there is. activists that are going to be upset gonna be with the fact that protesting outside the studio next Siegel week. Seagull took my fries, chomped off my burger that I spent my hard-earned money for when I'm at the beach. And then I shouldn't do nothing. I shouldn't say nothing. There was another human being that came and took a bite off of my sandwich. I would have said something. I have a lot of questions about this. Okay, seagulls are protected by federal law, right? Mice aren't protected by federal law. Flies aren't protected by federal law. Where do you draw the line? Which animals are we allowed to harm and which animals are we not allowed to harm? I'm curious. And where do they make these decisions? And what judge woke up in the morning and went to work and had to make these distinctions about which birds and bugs are protected and which ones aren't? And Colin Kaepernick took a stand and showed us there may be some other people not protected by law. How could you make the seagull topic about Colin Kaepernick, Jalen Rose? The way that you did do this is just, it, it's amazing. <laughs> you can derail any topic, derail Revis. That wasn't derail, that was game. Blouses. Another, another thing we learned, <laughs> Stefan Diggs loves Starbucks. He loves Starbucks so much. Not only does he love to go order Starbucks, gets his lattes and his drinks, he has a Starbucks chain with emeralds and diamonds on it of the Starbucks logo, Jalen Rose. Soft over boss move, Starbucks chain. Planting a seed to create a harvest. We're going to look up and he's going to have a deal with them. That's what I truly believe. You know, so stay tuned. They're going to give him like a gift card. And he That's just all. got a new deal. It ain't like he just started getting paid. So he wasn't the only professional athlete to get a ridiculous, insane chain. There was also Chris McCullough of the NBA. His nickname is Brisk. So he's got an iced tea can chain. This is just going too far, Jalen. It's never going too far when you're spending your heart on money on things that you dreamed about having. However, I will say, unlike Stefan Diggs, my intel is correctly. He makes like a one million dollars before taxes. Over a million, like one point two or something like that. Okay, so that's after taxes. He makes one point nine million dollars. So after taxes and after you pay your agent, oh, that could that's mil. less than a million. Yeah, that's a okay. hundred thousand dollar chain. And for those that haven't been paying attention, you pay insurance every step you take. Mm-hmm. That's a portion of your grip. So what I would say is he really's invested in that chain so much, like I was in the mansion, they probably spent 20% of his Here's salary the to There's get it. There's no resale value for that chain either. You can sell the mansion <laughs> to somebody else. No one else wants the iced tea can chain. Nope. And there's going to be a jeweler like, hey, I'll just give you the diamonds. Will he keep 50% of them and give you the rest? Yep. This is Jalen Rose's favorite segment that we have. It's time for cultural or regional. Let's go. It's not either regional or cultural. This is universal. The first is what we do is we ask our fans and our listeners to give us some questions about things that are either cultural or regional, and then we answer them. Like this one. The first one we have is from Rob. Shout out. Rob Steven wants to know, ordering all restaurant food like steaks or hot wings or tempura lobster, etc. well done. Is that cultural or regional? That's 1,000% well. Ordering things well done is cultural. It's cultural. Number one. Number two, which is also cultural when you go to a restaurant and you look like me, you never order exactly what's on the menu. No, Jalen Rose. We need to substitute. Jalen Rose qualifies every single thing he orders, <laughs> and you order everything well done. Every time you order fries, what do you say? Well done. Crispy. Crispy. Every time you order bacon, crispy. Every time you order some fries, you get them. Hot wings, crispy. You send hot wings back to get fried more. I've seen you do this multiple times. You send steaks back. You send lobster back. You send everything back. You even before you even like touch it, you just look at it and say, "Send it back." It needs to be more done. Correct. Some people get really upset about people getting well done steaks and things like well, that. Well, what what happens at a restaurant? They'll give you one of the worst ones because the chef like they don't really understand what a great steak is. How come you can't just order something normally? Why do you always have to qualify it or add something to it or do something like that? Because it's cultural. I guess so. I don't understand it at all. That's the Sometimes point. Sometimes I just order it just like it is written down. I just ask for it that's and then they bring the, it to me and I eat that's it. That's the point. We never order exactly things how they're written on the menu. I don't understand why. And we want everything well done. Okay. The only thing I order well done every single time is pizza. Everybody order well done pizza. And then It'll change extra your life. sauce. Next, we have a voicemail. If you call 985-80-Jalen, you can leave us voicemails and we'll play them on the show just like this one. Yo, Jalen and Jacoby, this is Jonas. And yelling at the TV, 
Yelling and or screaming. Cultural or regional. Big shout out to Norman for calling in. Shout Jill out. and Rose yelling at the TV. Is that cultural or regional? Universal. Universal. I think so, too. Because you got to take into account sports fans. Mm-hmm. Always yelling at the TV. Or people that watch sitcoms or movies or different things that you're watching. Reality shows. Things of that nature. So there are always times... When people are watching TV and they get animated by things that they're seeing or people are seeing. I think it's universal as well. We don't add universal and medicinal as options in the segment title, <laughs> but they are. Just know that they're also options. They're off-menu options. Just like you qualify everything with off-menu options are universal and medicinal. There you go. Moving on. We have a tweet from a gentleman by the name of Show Me the Movie or a lady who knows. Shout out. Jill and Jacoby. Those car decals with the members of your family or bumper stickers in general, cultural or regional? Well, car decals are cultural, yeah, let, period. I'll take this one. It's cultural. No it's doubt cultural. About you know what else it is? Tacky. It corny. <laughs> Just because you have a bunch of kids, does it, we know you have a bunch of kids. You're driving a minivan, okay? You don't have to detail every one of your kids on the back. I hate those things. I, I don't I don't understand it. You, you guess who's got a million kids? Me. I don't need to run around and show everybody with a bumper sticker. You know what I mean? It's all right. I get it. You've got two girls and a boy. I understand. You don't have to get the decals. You know what you sound like? What? A guy that used to be the minivan mafia capo. I am the capo of the minivan mafia. sold out. I am the capo of the minivan mafia. You still have your bike, but now you ditched your minivan. Here's the thing. Bumper stickers are a terrible idea 100% of the time. You know why? Can't remove them. You can't take them off. So you you ever see that car with all the bumper stickers on it? They probably didn't even put the bumper stickers on it. That's probably a used car that they bought. This is why you should send your kids to private school. Because they don't give you a sticker. They give you a magnet. Okay, Jalen, I'll send my kids to private school. You pay for it. I'll just forward the invoices to you. I got too many kids to consider private school, okay? True. I, I can't do that. Bumper stickers are the worst. Also, if you, I ran a marathon, I don't need to put 26.2 on my bumper. True. I get it. You ran a marathon. You don't need a sticker to show everybody. And, and, well, you got you, a bunch of kids. You don't need a sticker to show everybody. You have three kids, barely the same age. That's 100000 a year. I'm going to get you on wax saying you're going to send my kids to private school. Cause I will do it tomorrow. <laughs> They'll be wearing the uniform with the khakis and the whole thing. Next, we have another voicemail cultural regional question. What up, Jalen and Jacoby? Is this cultural or regional? Me and my lady just moved in together, and I was reaching into the refrigerator to grab some hot sauce. And my girl said, why do you have so many hot sauces? Can't you just use one? I looked at her and I said, what? What did you say? Having multiple bottles of hot sauce. We're talking four or five different hot sauces in the fridge. Is that cultural or regional? Definitely cultural. Really? Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, I've got multi hot sauces in my house. But the thing about it is knowing which ones they are is Mm -hmm. the key. Mm -hmm. So for me, like I've done a couple of posts and I had red hot in there representing the Midwest and represent from Detroit. And I have people screaming at me like, why do you have that? But they don't understand. It's like four or five more. That was just the one I was using at the time. You know what? You know what I do now? This is kind of ridiculous. Do you know what I do? I match my hot sauces to the foods. So if I'm eating Mexican food, Cholula. If I'm eating Caribbean food, Scotch bonnet, pepper, inner beauty, the greatest hot sauce on the planet. And if, if I'm eating some, you know, southern fried chicken, Louisiana hot sauce, I match my hot sauce. What are you doing? That's why this is cultural. We ain't doing all of that. No. Why not? That's way too much thought. I coordinated. I'm thinking. coordinated. No, that's way oh, too no. much. Oh, no. Oh, no. I that, definitely like, do that. I, it's one thing. I definitely now, do I, that. I know no, people no, no, that go no, no, to no. the You're restaurant wrong. and like. You're wrong. I, I know people that go to the restaurant and be like, yo. White wine for this, red yes. wine for that. Yes. I get that, but not hot sauce. Oh, no. That's they why I have different hot sauces. They all have different flavors that no. match the foods. No. You're crazy about Please this one. Please hit me up I'm and right tell me if one. I'm wrong. I'm right on this I one. Know. If you're eating Caribbean food, if you're eating you know, rice and peas with some jerk chicken, you don't put Tabasco sauce on that. You don't put Red Hot on that. You have to get the Caribbean hot sauce to match the Caribbean foods. You don't do this. Am I alone in this? Am I the only person that does this? That's why it's cultural. That's why the answer is just what I said, because I don't do that. You do. A lot of times people think it's in reverse. When I say cultural, it's a black thing. No, 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 no. no that's no, no. not what this means. Fine. We know what this you mean is with, the car decals, with the car decals. We know who you're talking Correct. about. You say cultural. This, this, this works in reverse. Let me say this. Hot sauce. This gentleman who called keeps it in the fridge. 
Do you keep hot sauce in the fridge or in the cabinet? So here's here's what I want to say. There's actually a distinction. What's that? I prefer it not in the refrigerator. Really? Personally. I go fridge. But what ends up happening when you don't put it in the refrigerator, it tends to get a little sloppy. Mm-hmm. Like after you use it, if you don't wipe it off shake good, it up. Yeah, 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 it gets a we little crunchy. We all know that crunchy, crunchy, that yeah. crunchy at the top. When exactly. you unscrew it and some flakes fall off. No question. Question for you. I just want everyone to know this. Jalen Rose has a custom bottle of mayonnaise at his desk. <laughs> and he keeps it right there at his desk and does not refrigerate it. It's actually right here. Do you know... Do you know how disgusting that is and how dangerous that is? Please tell me. I'm just, I'm just glad that you're, you're still here because you were eating mayonnaise that was sitting out in the open for a month. I, I'm so glad you're still here. I don't prefer my hot sauce refrigerated. I don't prefer my mayo cold. I don't prefer my Aunt Jemima refrigerated as well. You know what Aunt Jemima is? Yes. Of course I know who Aunt Jemima is. We have one more. Really quickly, we have a tweet. Okay. Cultural... Regional or universal cooking bacon in the oven. Very quickly. That's regional. That's universal. That's regional. That's universal. That's regional. Bacon in the oven. That's regional. Not bad. I've never done it. My wife does it. I don't never do it. Done. I go pan bacon. Never I go pan every single time. It. I do pan never. every single yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never put it in the oven, but my wife will do it. Okay, we have issues here on Jalen and Jacoby. We have, we have, we have problems. We have serious we have problems here problems. on Jalen and Jacoby. We did a segment about hot sauce, a cultural, regional. You know, a caller just had an innocent question about having multiple hot sauces or not. I thought it was completely normal to have multiple hot sauces and match them to the, the, the foods that you have. What? The control room what? in Los Angeles is all blowing what? up on fire. We got JC and Kayla here in the control room in New York. They're, they're in the conversation as well. And here's one of the main points of contention. Okay, keeping it in the fridge versus outside of the fridge. What? I go fridge all day, every day, what? every day fridge. What? The fridge keeps things. It's it's a, it's a perishable good. We disagree there. It's a perishable good. To me, if you put hot sauce in the refrigerator, it takes away from the actual sting of the hot sauce. It's not as that potent. makes no sense, Mr. Rose. It do- it takes away from the state. Wait, it put it's it in- not as potent. Okay, Jalen, 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 Jalen. Let me explain something to you, it's sir. Not- Let me explain something to you. When it's called hot sauce, they're not talking about the temperature when it's called hot sauce. They're talking about the spice. I don't know if you know this, that hot sauce doesn't have to be hot temperature-wise. It's hot spicy. Because if you put it in the fridge, it remains just as spicy. It's just not old. When you take something out of the refrigerator. Yes. It's a little bit chill. Yes. It's a little bit I agree with you. We're on the same page here. Okay. When I pour my hot sauce on my lemon pepper wings. Okay. When I've just taken them out of the oven, I do not want that liquid to be cold. No. So you're saying... The two drops of hot sauce on a wing is going to make the wing cold? Yep. That's that's your that's where you're going here? That's your angle? Yep. I'm saying that when you do not refrigerate it, it still seems to have more of a steam to okay, it. Okay, now here's another question I have for you. Do you think that Cholula has the same flavor as Red Hot? No. Okay, so they have different flavors. The same way that a bologna sandwich has a different flavor than a roast beef sandwich, right? Yes. Okay, so we've just established that different hot sauces are actually different foods. That is why I have multiple hot sauces in my fridge. Okay. So I can use them on different foods. Okay. Because they're different flavors. Okay. Why are you using one universal hot sauce? Let, let me teach you why. And I'm talking to you, let, Reggie. I'm not let, even talking let, to let, you. Let me teach you why. I understand as a consumer that they're different. Okay. I understand the hot sauce. If I'm at a restaurant that they're going to put on my wings, it's probably different than the one that they're going to put on my burrito. Yes. But when I go to the supermarket, guess what I'm not doing? Buying four or five different hot sauces. Did you guess, guess what you are doing? It wrong. I'm going to buy one hot sauce. Now, when I go to a restaurant and I'm having to eat Mexican food... I eat whatever hot sauce they bring with that. Well, you don't have options at a restaurant. Correct. I would love it. I would love it. I would love nothing more than if I asked for hot sauce, they came out with like a hot sauce tray. So you and they go, had all of them. And they were so just you, like, you could choose from this, sir. So you go to the supermarket with your wife and your three kids. Y'all pulling a basket. You pulling out. You picking out five different hot sauces? I'm buying hot sauces online. What? <laughs> 
I'm buying hot sauces online. I research hot sauces. I want to give a big shout to Inner Beauty Hot Sauce, which I just ordered this week, and they're on the way. I bought extra bottles to bring to the seaport just to spread the Inner Beauty love around to the great colleagues of mine here. And he's at not ESPN lying in because Kayla says she he gave her one too. Uh huh. It's on. It's on route. Kayla's here, so I want to hear from Reggie what the control room is so upset about in Los Angeles because we need to we need to talk this out. Shout out. Thank okay. you. Okay, so Thank the you. control room in Los Angeles, the control room in Los Angeles is saying the viscosity of hot sauce changes in the fridge, that it gets thicker. And I know you don't know the word viscosity. I barely know but it. But I know but I learned what the it word a long thicker means. Yes, it gets thicker. So like <laughs> molasses, very viscous. Water, not viscous. Correct. So that might be fair. It might be fair. The viscosity does change in the fridge. However. It doesn't get old. You don't have to worry about hot. Does hot sauce get old? Everything gets old. Does hot sauce get old? What are you saying? I'm just saying, like, I that, think that's like you asking me, does milk expire? Of course it does. Some foods don't get, yeah, everything gets old. <laughs> everything gets old. I was trying to think of <laughs> Y'all recording old. this? Canned goods, Is he speaking into goods, a microphone right goods, now? Canned goods get old. So <laughs> Harlan, our television producer Harlan, says he has 10 hot sauces. I'm with Harlan on this one. This might be cultural. I think yep. overthinking your hot sauce is cultural. Yep. Thank you. Who yeah. walks into a supermarket and comes out with 10 hot sauces? <laughs> Intelligent people. Come on, man. Brilliant Stop geniuses. It. Stop it. Gods of Earth. Stop it. Yeah. I mean, look, they don't taste the same. No, you guys. They don't taste the same. You, you guys act like. Wait you're, till you try this hot beauty. Your, your Wait home, till you try it. Your home Wait till you try it. Your home Wait till you try it. Wait till you try it. I'm going to keep your it. Home your home ain't a restaurant. Your home ain't a restaurant. No. You don't sit down at the table and have ten different hot sauces and no. pick like like you know the wines at a restaurant. I have the one hot sauce that I want the every single time. That's what I have in my home. So what's your all purpose hot sauce? All purpose hot sauce, Louisiana. Okay. That's my favorite. Okay, so that's your go to. That's my go to. That's my point. That's my go My side piece, inner beauty. Give me the point. Inner beauty. Red side said he like red jump rooster. Off. I like jump red off side hot. piece. Inner beauty is so good. <laughs> I'm so excited to have it here. I'm it's it, everyone's gonna be hooked on this stuff. It is so good. Telling you. All right, I can't wait. I want to thank everybody for calling in. I want to thank everybody for working Passionate on the show. Discussion. For getting inside, for just creating this hot sauce debate. And we said that we were going to do shows Monday through Friday this week. We didn't. Nope. I think we're scheduled to do shows Monday through Friday next week, but who knows? But I do know one thing we're done. not done. We're not done. We're not done. Guys, I love them. Speaking of the hobbits, let's talk about LeBron James for a second.